and Garrett's one of our main testers here at West Coast Saw, and he uh, he puts her to the test. So <laughs> you've ripped up a couple of bars here and there. These are my two 32 inch bars that I'm currently using. Um, one's a backup, and one's the the one I'm I'm cutting with. One of them will switch a tip on. We're gonna tune them both up. They're both pretty used and pretty beat up, so we'll try to tune them up to the um, best condition they can be in um, and get them back going for, for next week. But we'll kind of go through a couple little processes and uh, hopefully we'll be able to help uh, some folks out with uh, taking so, care of. So which one are you doing the tip on? We'll do the tip on this one. Okay. Yeah. And what do folks look for when they're going to change a tip, Garrett? You know, the the rolling of the edge here, eventually the, it'll get so worn, it'll get a moon a moon shape out of each side um, as you flip and rotate your bar. Because as it rotates around and then it starts to... As the chain comes around the tip. It starts to pothole afterwards. Yep. yep. The cha chain will come around your tip and it'll slap into this portion and wear, wear that area. And that's where you get the rolled over edges. So okay. This bar is further in its life. It's pretty beat up. We'll, we'll tune it up but it's not really worth doing a tip on at this point, I don't think. Both of them have quite a bit of rail wear and uh, wear and tear on them, so. We'll see what we can do with them, make them, make them go. Okay. All right, so the tools I'll be using, the basic tools would be a flat file. This little gem is uh, for tuning the edges of your skis, and I've found it's very- Snow skis. Yep, your snow skis. So um, it basically gives you a, a 90 degree angle up to this this file edge. So I'll use that to tune the flat edge here. And I'll use the large flat file to get rid of the large burrs and tune the edges from this plane out flat. To change a tip, we got a drill, drill bit, a punch, a new tip, ball peen, um, and to reset our gauge and our rails, we'll use this rail squeezer um, and we'll run it down and squeeze the rails back to, to where it fits the proper gauge correctly. That's kind of the, the basics, hand tools, plus the drill to be able to, to get the task done. So. We'll start by doing the basic tune up on the bar I'm not gonna take the tip off of. So we'll tune out the, the rails, sides and the top, and then we'll be able to set this aside. Then we'll remove the tip on this. While the tip's off of this, we will tune, tune the rails, um, all planes of those, and then we will squeeze the rails after we tune them, and then make sure they fit in a proper, proper gauge chain, and replace the tip after that. I pulled out all the gunk out of my rails the best I wanted to. Um, anything that'll fit in, in between the rails, just get the junk out of it. Um, this is kind of how I like to get the flat plane on my sides is I'll, I'll pinch it in a vise. I'll have each rail just above the vise so I can run a flat file the whole length of it without having the vise in the way. So I don't want to stop in the middle necessarily because I could leave a gouge that I don't want. Up in the front, you'll have extra material that's rolled over and in the back, the chain does the same thing as it comes around your sprocket, it'll slap into this portion of the bar and this portion of the bar, and you'll have extra rolled material there. But you get it in there nice and tight, and the most important thing is you want it a flat plane. It's really tempting to have rolled edges and wanna just get rid of them. But you don't necessarily wanna do that because then you have a rolled over corner and your chain will wanna roll off more in that area. So if you can, keep it flat all the way out. I like to do that by having my file completely flat on the whole thing and run my file down. Do you find that some bars are worse than others as far as the rollover and the wear and tear and all that? Yeah. Different bars are made out of different, the manufacturers use different metal in them. Um, some bars are tougher than others. Some will kind of resist rolling, the rolling material more. There's a point where your metal is, is so tough that it's brittle, and then you'll get a bar that, that just snaps. Yeah. And then you'll get some bars that are made of softer material, and then you'll, you'll get that, that rolling of the edge more. So it's, it's, a, it's a balancing act, it's kind of, 
them trying to find the happy medium to where it's not gonna not gonna roll the edges and it's not gonna snap. So different brands will kind of um, have have different issues more frequently, but so you can see here along the edge, all that silver metal, that is where the rails have spread out enough to where I'm removing metal here with a flat plane across the whole thing. So that's that's making the entire bar flat, and that's what I want. Okay. I'd say that's pretty good for this side. This old bar, I'll do the other. So Garrett falls timber full time. So what, five days a week, probably sometimes six. So as far as like tuning your bars up, how often do you actually have to do this? And then how long before the bar is completely done, you think? If I get a quarter of a year, if I get three months off a bar, it's pretty dang good. And within that three months, I'll probably switch at least once. Yeah. I'll usually get, if I don't completely bend the bar, I'll usually get uh, two or three tip replacements before I'm going to consider the bar. So three months and she's done. See, so you went through some bars, I get, take it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> you can see on this particular bar, I've got some chipping out of the, the rails up here. I've got some on the other side too. It's definitely a thing that you'll get into at the at the end of the life of the bar. The other thing you'll get into is the this portion of the bar will start getting skinnier and skinnier as as the edges get rolled over. Yep. And then you tune it, and then it gets rolled over again. This part of the bar will. I mean, you can see here the part of the bar here is skinnier than the factory tip. Using this little jig, I'm going to try to flatten out both my rails to the same plane. If you look up here where my chips are in this portion of the bar, this rail on this side is lower from, from wear and tear. Hopefully I'm able to flatten out the bar to get an even plane. An even plane so when the chain's sitting in here running, it's not favoring one side. If it does favor one side, that can give you, even with a nicely tuned chain, can let the chain pull one direction more than the other. And you can just buy these online, right? I mean, they just have them yeah. on the interweb. And I mean, it, it's just a jig that holds a, a file 90 degrees from a, from a plane. So, you, I mean, you could make one. You could um, buy one of these or inexpensive online. Um, they make similar things for other other tasks as well. But this one, you know, it's specifically for the ski, ski edge tuning. Yeah, they um, work good on the bar. I got yeah. a couple of them under the bench. You still got a couple of chips, so you're you're probably not gonna get that one out. No, that one's She's really that one's deep. very deep, and that's why this is my my spare bar. Doesn't mean it doesn't get a little love every once in a while. There we go, it's fighting better now. All right, you might be able to see with the video, with the shine from the light, you might be able to see areas where it's like, you know, around this, this defect, it's touching this rail, but it's not touching this area. So it's bringing this portion of the rail down to this height. So. Yeah, you can still see you need a little more. This old bar, I'm not gonna go too crazy on, so I'll flip it and do the other side. For some reason, this bar has that chunk out of it on the same side, same area on each side, bottom and top. I don't, definitely not operator error. <laughs> It's never operator air, dude. <laughs> it's got to be something they're doing in the factory. It has to be. That side looks a little better. I don't know if the camera off. I'm definitely taking more off this rail than that one, and less on this rail. So it should perform better. All right. So now Garrett's gonna demonstrate removing the tip. These uh, rivets they go in one way. So there's a couple different ways to get them out. Garrett can tell you about it. Easiest way I've found is a drill, not necessarily to drill all the way through the rivets that are holding it on, but to remove some of the material in that so I can use a punch and a hammer and then punch those rivets out. Um, you want a punch that's small enough, it's gonna reach through your, your rivet holes. All right, what are we on to do? All right, we'll get a little bit of this material out from these three rivets holding the tip on, and then 
Ideally, with a couple of hits of the hammer and the punch, we'll push the rivet out the opposite side. So. So you see that rivet caught in the drill and it started spinning? Yep. Sometimes if it does that, you can flip flip the thing over or hit it from this side and just ball peen that rivet in tighter and then take another stab at it with the drill to get more material out. But once the rivet starts spinning, it's loose and uh, yeah, it can and you can't get enough fat <laughs> off the ears. <laughs> yeah. So that should be pretty good. Um, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll give it a couple wax and hopefully, hopefully some of these rivets will come out. For A little more out of this one. Oh, it's spinning. Just have to get Western with it, Garrett. <laughs> this is. There's probably. See, see if it'll spin. There's probably a million different ways to do it, but this is kind of the system I've come up with that works for me, so. There you go. Well, that'll do her. Sometimes as a bar gets old, this cutout in here can get sloppy and you'll take a new tip and put a new tip on and even with a new tip on it it can be sloppy but that's kind of the world of old bars and keeping them going so you can see this one's got quite a bit of wear here mm -hmm. up to the new tip the bar itself is skinnier than the the new tip and um not a huge deal It'll, how far do you generally like to go before the step's too much garrett i <laughs> I like to run my stuff until it. <laughs> I know you do, but <laughs> until it's not working anymore. But that's me personally. You can kind of gauge gauge it how how you want to run your gear. And I mean, the bars are very expensive. Tips are expensive. So if I've got a tip that's still spinning and a bar that's still straight, I'll generally keep cutting with keep. it, and <laughs> keep tuning it until it's <laughs> yeah. <Sorry. laughs> Um, before I put this tip on, we will do the rail tuning on this bar and we'll squeeze the rails on this bar as well um, to get it back to the proper gauge. And another way you can get that tip off is if you have a chain breaker, you can use your chain breaker. Yeah. The, and Oregon does make a bigger pin for your chain breaker for bar tips. I don't have the part number, but like the chain breaker over here that I got, it's got a small tip on it. So it's not, it's not ideal for pushing those out, but they make a bigger one and you can just pop those rivets right out. And I've even, you know, reused the rivets if I had to, you know, on some of the older bars, if I didn't have a rivet. So that's another way of doing it. So this, this still lightweight bar has been crushed in a cut. And these still lightweight bars, they've got these ridges in them few ridges that run down their, their insert area. And if you put a lot of weight on there, it'll smash the material between them and it'll cause it to be wavy. Yep. But Because they're hollow in here and those are the, yeah. the structure pieces in there. So for me personally, I will continue to run this bar as long as I can get a flat plane. And you can see here, it's me do it, tuning it like this has removed material from this ridge, which was pushed up, raised a little bit. So. How'd you get those dents, Garrett? You didn't have a tree set back or anything, did you? No, no, I, I let some guy cut himself out. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's always that other guy. Definitely. Look at your oil holes and some of the bars with brittle metal in them. I've had it happen to still bars. I've had it happen to organ bars and cannons and Samiras and all that. Um, sometimes we get a hairline fracture in this area. This hole here, drilled here, makes a, a weak point in this part of the bar. Clamped on your saw with leverage from all the way out through the bar, you know. It takes a lot of abuse, but that's that, something to that keep, one. keep in mind. You some of these are, are solid. There, right? Some of the... Some brands cut, some this brand. por cut this portion here. Some don't. Some bars from the same brand put a slice here. Some don't. Um, that just kind of lets these yeah, ears move a little bit. Two tags have some movement between them without creating a new crack. It's it's pretty broke for you there to relieve some pressure if, if it's on there weird or whatever. Okay. Pretty happy with this flat plane. Flip it and do the other side. These still lightweights are pretty darn good bar. I mean, as light as they are in the price point. Besides the smashing, 
effect and yeah when you get up into the longer bars like the 36 inches you get a little bit more um movement in the bar and you'll have a tendency to throw more chains with this still lightweight in my opinion than the say the cannon or a bigger steel bar but a 32 inch still lightweight is a really nice bar so so something i've learned the hard way so maybe you guys can avoid it is if you're going to pinch your bar in a vice this direction pay attention to where your rails are because if you pinch it right on the edge of the rail hard it'll pinch your rails closed yep. so Pay attention to where your rails are if you are going to squeeze a bar in a vise this way. One thing that we've ran into since I've made the clutch covers also is some of these still lightweights, even from the factory brand new out of the box, right in this area on the outside edge of the rails, they'll be concaved on both sides and you just take your flat file and run it across like Garrett's doing and you can start peeling that paint. On our aluminum clutch covers, they're a big flat surface so when they and they bolt down, um, they actually can pinch the chain because they're they're pinching it between basically the bar plate and the clutch cover. So that's one area to take a look at always when you get a new bar is right in this area. And some of them, some of them are concave and some of them aren't. Like I've had a couple that didn't need any tuning at all, but for some reason, I don't know if it was in their hardness of the rails when they hardened the rails or whatever, it just kind of, it was just enough, a couple of thousands will make the difference. And you go to bolt your clutch cover on it, it pinches it and the chain won't spin. And uh, it's all just, just that little edge right there. Made all the difference. Basically an unfortunate manufacturing overlook. Some of the, you, they're making thousands these days, I'm sure, whatever. So, but. Yeah, if you get a, get a brand new bar, take your flat file, put it up flat against the edge and run it out and see <laughs> you you'll be able to see right away if it has that concave yeah. it might have been from them drilling that it might oil have been. Hole. it's usually right in the oil hole area it's just right in there you'll see it start taking a tiny bit of paint so i grabbed one of our clutch covers here so this surface right here is all flat on the inside of the clutch cover and then when you basically bolt it down to your saw see if i can hold it in there you go you can see how it's, you know, pushing all the way across the bar compared to like, this is a stock 500 cover or 462 cover. It's only raised in the middle right here. So it's only touching in the center of the bar. So it leaves clearance on the top. So they kind of anticipated that bar being a little bit off when you say, Garrett, I mean, yeah, it, but on ours, like I even made a revision on our 500. I, I trimmed the back off of it. This is a, this is a 461 cover, but I trim the back these off to anticipate the bars being off a little bit. So just one thing to look at on the bars. You're tuning them up. Uh, one of the thoughts in this design, having as much material here contacting the bar as possible is to be able to squeeze that bar and hold it without it moving. Yeah. The best you can. Cause so. as you're only gripping with that center, I mean, it's, it's reefing a lot on just a very slight little bit of the rail right there. So you're getting more twist in the center of your bar. So that's why I made the the surface a lot bigger. I was trying to get a bigger basically grip on it. More contact. More contact on the bar. But other than that, these are great bars. I like mine. You got here, shop dog. Daisy the shop dog. Daisy the shop dog. All right, we got a 63 gauge Oregon chain here. This old beat bar and put it in there. You can see that wiggle side to side. So squeezing these rails together, hopefully we're gonna get rid of a little bit of that movement and keep it as tight as possible and true as possible for the length of the bar. Our process is gonna be using this rail squeezer, run it across, refit the chain, make sure the chain fits, squeeze it a little bit tighter, squeeze it a little bit tighter until we minimize our wiggle without closing it too tight to prevent the chain yep. spinning. So this uh, is a really simple tool, two ball bearings held on with these nuts and bolts. Um, it'll fit your bar in between and you'll slowly increase the pressure in pushing it together, running it the length of your bar to uh, to get those rails to get tighten up. Tighten up, yeah. You have an adjustment here that sets on top of the bar and that'll let you choose how much of these ball bearings you want 
to reach down the sides of your bar, so. Yep. Uh, keep in mind on the end, right at the end here, it's gonna squeeze easier because it has nothing out here to support this piece of metal. So I'll usually run the full length a couple times and then I'll leave this portion and this portion alone and just kind of run the middle of the bar. Okay. So I don't, because these will close way, way easier than it will throughout the, the length. So we got it on here. It's got two little guides here to keep, keep it on here. Basically handle, adjust your pressure and run the length of the bar. It's super important to tune your rails on the sides because if you had some of that rolled over material sticking out, then you would get a false reading and it would push that portion of the bar together. So always tune your rails first, first and then squeeze them. If you watch here as I'm going, it wants to raise up. So I'm going to need to put downward pressure as I'm running it. Take some reefing on her. Yeah. Test fit. Want to use a new chain or a newer chain? Get your test fit. See, now it's not wanting to just fall into the rail. It's still moving. And yeah, we're tighter. It's a lot nicer. We'll call that good and we'll do the other side. So, is that what you kind of like to see, Gares, is when you kind of shove it down? Like, yeah. <laughs> so, if you squeeze it too tight, then you're going to have to reopen it. And Basically to reopen it, kind of a pain in the butt, and you run the risk of tweaking your bar different ways. But the easiest way to do that is take a bar tool or a flathead screwdriver or whatever, put it in there, tap the end of it with a hammer, and it'll spread it out a little bit. And you basically have to run the whole length of the bar that you squeezed too tight, spread it back out, and then you're kind of in the same spot of probably too. You can chase your tail a little bit if you get too hungry and close your whole rail. So we just gotta do baby steps and keep test fit. Okay. That's the best. Okay, this is my, my second side, squeezing the rails on this bar, and we've got a couple sections that aren't quite fitting down in there. Around the oil hole, a weak point, squeeze tighter, and up at the tip, not quite fitting in there. That squeezed tighter. Okay. So I'm gonna go through that process to reopen those couple areas. I'm gonna use a bar tool, common bar tool, and I'll let you know <laughs> how I select a bar tool, is I want a bar tool I can have in my pocket. So if I'm in the field, if I get my bar pinched in a tree or something and it closes the rails because the tree was heavy enough to do that. Um, I want a bar tool in my pocket that I can take out and use my, my ax and my bar tool and reopen my rail to keep working. So the bar tools that I like to buy are, have this kicker in them. They start nice and skinny to fit into your, um, your adjustment on your saw, but then they get fat pretty quick. So that will allow you like this one's skinny all the way, right? Yep. Skinny all the way. If you go in there, it, it'll bottom out yep. before it spreads the well. And so the ratchet rails. scrinch one's definitely too skinny. Yep, the ratchet, yep. the ratchet scrinch is designed to be able to fit inside yep. the rail. So it doesn't good, so, doesn't good for spreading. I do love the ratchet scrinch and I use it all the time, but I always keep a bar tool like this in my kit. So if this issue happens while I'm at work, I can continue to work. Yep, the fat kicker's on it. I can put it in here, tap it with my ax, and it'll spread my rail out, okay. so. You want an ax so you feel at home? <laughs> right. I'll go get you one. Tell we got this beautiful ball pin. Use one of those Conrad axes. Right? Yeah. It's a 10 pounder? I don't know about that. It shouldn't take too much, so. So you just kind of move along in the area that was pinched and yep. keep moving down the way? Yeah, so I, it's probably hard to see on video, but I can see it's tight right through here. So okay. I'll pick the middle of my tight spot, give it a tap, and then I'll go left and right like that. Maybe one more on the right side there. Let's see if that remedied. Okay, so we're pretty tight. It's keeping the chain up a little bit just with the oil and dirt. This chain's done on it. Do you remedy? So this one, this one's sitting in there, so that's good. This one up front is still pretty tight. I'm gonna bang on it a little more. Bang that a couple times there and call it good. It's close. Yeah. Honestly, you could probably put this on your saw and hit go. And it'll clearance itself. Yeah, with lube and open itself up, so. All right, final check. And we're good up front, cool. Yep, so we'll put the tip back on this beauty and be ready to go back to work. All right, so now what are we doing? 
We got our bar tuned, our rail squeezed. We got our new tip ready to go on. An old tip generally has dirt, debris, tree sap, stuff underneath here. You don't necessarily want to put a new tip over that and then put your rivets in because um, you have a little bit of gap there. So always make sure you kind of clean out the corners and crevices and get rid of all that old gunk and tree sap so your new tip has a nice flat spot to try to seat the best it possibly can. I always try to find a something heavy metal. If you're changing a tip in the field, you could use like two falling axes basically to do this, but um, something with a metal corner on it seems to be best for one rivet at a time. Put it in there, find your metal corner, match it up on your metal corner so that that metal corner underneath is pushing your rivet up. Ball peen hammer, falling axe, whatever you got, and basically you'll smash it, mushroom over the sides, Looks good. It's nice and flush. If your rivet is kind of mounded up or mushroomed up still or whatnot, you can take your flat file, shave off the extra if you need to. Okay. Honestly, you could run this thing with one rivet. We'll put them all in. Flat file. Let's make sure I don't have anything extra tall. And the back side also, you can see that one kind of rolled up a little bit. So. Yeah. Sweet. That is the old tip that came off there, new tip on there. An old beat up, tuned up bar. An old beat up, tuned up bar with a new tip, so. Thanks for watching, hopefully it helps. If you guys have any different ideas or different ways that you go about doing the same process, just uh, throw them down below in the comments. And uh, yeah, share that information with everybody and try all the different tricks you can to figure out what works best for you sweet happy cutting friends thanks garrett see you guys later